Hello, everyone. My name is Chris Hatfield, and I'm the executive director of the Minnesota State Transportation Center of Excellence. In this presentation, we hope to be able to give you a little bit more information about what the Transportation Center of Excellence does and what we're calling Transportation Center of Excellence 101. If you'll notice in the corner, there is a nice QR code that you can hover your phone around and be able to go to a variety of our different parts of our website. Uh, you're going to be able to meet our entire team today. We're going to give you a little bit of an opportunity to see what the Transportation Center does, how we support Minnesota's transportation career pathways, and more. So once again, I'll uh, introduce myself, and, and uh, the rest of our team is going to introduce ourselves as well. We serve across the entire state of Minnesota, supporting all of the transportation career and education pathways, as well as the workforce development within uh, with our industry partners. My name is Chris Hatfield. I'm the executive director. And with us today is? Uh, my name is Steve Humberg. I'm the director of outreach. My job is to promote and advocate for these uh, pathways, both with uh, industry and with our college partners and high school partners. So again, I would uh, echo what Chris said earlier and encourage all of you to engage in our webpage. Uh, you can see it in the corner of our screens, mintran.org. You can see our email addresses here, or even that uh, user-friendly QR reader for those of you who like to use your smartphones while you're attending these presentations. So once again, my name is Steve Humberg, Director of Outreach. Please uh, contact me if there's anything I can help you with. Hello, my name is Michaela Holman Schmidt. I'm the administrative assistant for the Transportation Center, and I mainly help with purchasing and um, other forms and documents needed. Hi, my name is Carl Borlay. I'm the Director of Program Excellence, and as the name implies, I try to bring excellence to the various transportation programs around the state. So there are many, many programs out there, and each one is unique uh, with unique differences and challenges, and we work to to help bring excellence to those programs. It can be in the form of our articulation agreements, credit for prior learning, uh, accreditation, and we can get into some of those details in a little bit, but it, it, hold, it has many facets. So keeps me busy. But again, Carl Borlay, Director of Program Excellence. Hi everyone, I'm Cassidy Jellen and I'm our project coordinator for the center. And I also oversee all of our marketing and communications as well. So in the, in the, for the Transportation Center of Excellence, um, there are eight different sectors in transportation. We have automotive technology, aviation, collision repair, diesel equipment and truck, marine and sports, technology education, truck driving, and we have a sector called specialty, which um, holds careers that are unique. Not all of the colleges have these programs, um, some examples of the pro of specialty careers are auto engineering and transportation management. Um, there are 25 colleges, 35, or 33 campuses, and 68 programs that the Transportation Center oversees. The green dots on the diagram represent the universities, and the navy blue dots represent the two-year colleges that the Transportation Center oversees. The Transportation Center was founded in 2013 by the Minnesota State Colleges and University System to drive workforce innovation through education and industry collaboration and to provide thought leadership on workforce development in Minnesota's transportation industry. We are fiscally housed and located at Dakota County Technical College in Rosemount, Minnesota, but have staff located across the state. Minnesota State hosts a total of eight centers of excellence, each serving a major industry that faces serious workforce challenges. Those industries include agriculture, energy, engineering, healthcare, information technology, manufacturing, and transportation. The three main ways we accomplish work at the center are by engaging industry, enhancing education, and inspiring students. The rest of this presentation will go into more in depth into these three areas and we'll break down some of the ways we accomplish these goals. In the Transportation Center of Excellence, it's important to know that we look at the transportation career pathways in a very holistic and large uh, viewpoint. And in order to do that, we need to work 
not just with our education partners, but with our in industry partners. It's an important concept and an important component of the Transportation Center to have all of the people that are in industry understanding and fully engaged with our career pathways and our workforce development. A lot of times when we talk about engaging industry, we talk about really engaging and connecting one as being one of the best ways to enhance education and really inspire the students. Some, uh, some details include things like being able to work with an employer so that they understand the education system and be able to customize solutions for them that really tailor to how they can partner with an educator, partner with an education system, and be able to understand how it is that that system works and how they can build their future workforce. Our executive board is a great example of how we both engage industry and education. We try to have a pretty close to 50-50 split of education and industry professionals on our executive board. We have 26 individuals on there currently, and they represent all of the transportation workforce sectors. Um, this includes things like large employer partners, industry or trade association leadership, college leadership, secondary system programmatic leadership that is represented by trade and industry, the Department of Education, which covers our K through 12 systems. A lot of our teacher associations have a seat at our board as well. And our workforce and labor organizations are an important component to our board as well as having teacher leaders on our board, which is a very special part of our board because we recognize and realize that if we don't have a very diverse board, both in terms of uh, representation and as well as thought leadership, that we aren't able to do the things that we are able to do. We also really pride the work in Minnesota, not just in the Transportation Center of Excellence, but across the state with all of our, our education uh, in organizations um, in creating those employer partnerships. You know, we've done a lot of research, we've done a lot of thinking, and we've done a lot of listening. And we know that in the long term, in the long run, that local connection between the and local partnership between an employer and a school, an employer and a technical college, an employer and a university, that local connection. And whether or not that local connection is across the street or a handful of miles down the road or in a specialty program across a large number of miles, we know that that local connection is the most important and the most sustainable way for, for employers and educators to work together to collaboratively develop that career pathway that is going to both create amazing student experiences, high motivation, and solve some of our key issues within our transportation workforce. You'll hear about a lot of different examples later on, but many of the times employer partnerships include work-based learning like apprenticeships and internships and job shadows and job uh, interview days, advisory committees or business and industry leadership committees. In advisory committees, a lot of our employer partnerships are developed and communicated. A lot of times we have these uh, in, in our, especially in our nine through 12 and our technical college programs uh, have a strong presence in advisory committees. Uh, a lot of our employer partnerships include outreach events and mock interviews, uh, places where we can actually take the day off and actually celebrate and let others feel um, what we're doing. Employers have abilities to do certain things that schools don't and the vice versa. It's through that partnership that we build each other. And that's what the Transportation Center helps build across the state. We also work with vehicle and equipment partnering. For example, uh, if we need a brand new vehicle, like a brand new excavator, a brand new airplane, a brand new car or snowmobile or something like that to drive home a point, teach a class, find out that latest technology or inspire that next generation of students that, that would turn into some of our greatest people and assets within our industry, we partner together on that because some of that technology can become a little expensive and a little bit difficult to acquire. And it's through those partnerships with employers and educators that that happens. We also do a variety of different things that are, are uh, later on going to talk about like classroom visits, 
summer camps, virtual industry tours, other curriculum resources, and partnerships, not just in the state of Minnesota, but across the nation. And the, the Transportation Center uses our collective capability as a state to access and engage employers in an original equipment manner, meaning at a national level. We also do employer partnerships related to scholarships, and that's a big deal because uh, uh, encouragement and finances in, in the financial area for a lot of our prospective students is certainly a big deal. Some of our best examples are advisory committees. In, in advisory committees, many of you listening to this have either uh, an advisory committee of your own or you're on an advisory committee, or you know of somebody that's on an advisory committee or has an advisory committee. This is one of the biggest areas of the Transportation Center where we enhance the advisory committee process. We help individual schools and employers understand what their roles could be, how to get a good return on their investment of time, what are some of the examples. We also attend a lot of advisory committees and we're a part of a lot of advisory committees all across the state at both high schools and colleges. And this is an integral part to the Transportation Center because it's about building that relationship, creating the methods of communication, allowing for those great ideas to be built up and those resources to come together into a singular area for a purpose of developing our great workforce for transportation in the state of Minnesota. A great example uh, of another employer partnership is that we do a lot of we, we do a lot of classroom visits. Now, in more recent times, we've done a lot of visits virtually, but we do a lot of visits um, either in person or through our employer partnerships. And currently, um, that has found, we found that that really inspires a student when an employer is able to visit. Now, whether or not it's the class visiting the employer, or the employer visiting the class, and whether or not that's physical or virtual, it is a very involved process. It takes a little bit of effort to set up if you want to do it right. And when we do it right, we found that we have a great amount of return on the investment. And we find that students are really engaged in that process to move to that next stage. Overall, we, we know that engaging industry provides some real world information and experience and uh, the transportation center has a specialty in being able to engage employers. We work with our partners all the time, both existing and new. We welcome anybody listening to this that's new to be able to call us, email us, contact us in any way, and we would be able to help you with engaging your local industry by providing some consultation, some actual cold calling, some association work, and, and simply just to kind of understand your process and how to enhance it, because we've been able to see not just across the state of Minnesota, but nationally, some of the best practices in engaging industry. Um, we wanna be able to help you improve the educational process that inspires students to continue on with their career if they choose this. Uh, the result of all of this work is really to have that better graduate that's prepared to enter the profession, their higher, higher chance that they're going to stay in this profession for a longer period of time, be motivated and be some of our great leaders within industry. But in the long run, we're really truly most, do, mostly doing this so that people can find a pathway that creates them happiness, they're motivated to be in it. And as a result, uh, we, we know that that individual is going to have a lifetime of experiences that are going to be positive. All right, so enhancing education uh, is the area that's probably the main focus of, of my position. And, but I need to be clear that as has already been mentioned, you'll probably see it throughout this presentation to, to really be effective and to be to be have excellence, it, it, it requires us to really focus on all three areas. So in order to enhance education, there has to be that in that industry involvement. And there has to be an in, in order for it to be good, you have to have uh, something that inspires the students, whether that's prior to 
uh, them engaging in the college setting or when they're in the college setting to have education that is inspiring and wants them to learn more. So it, uh, it really is a team effort among all of us to, to, to make this happen and a, and a combined focus on all of those three things. But for the moment, we're gonna be talking about enhancing education, so. And again, in this case, we, we partner with education, uh, education partnerships um, and helping them engage with industry. So helping them with their advisory committees, helping them with uh, the various aspects of, uh, uh, of a technical education that, it, that involves industry. Um, and then looking at the different ways that we can make better instruction. Uh, you know, COVID was a big challenge for us in the sense that things had to transition from a typically face to face to more of a online presence or a, a hybrid type presence. And so we needed to work through that and figure out how to make that happen. And you, you make connections with other, in, with other educational people to find out what they're doing. And that's really the value that the center brings is we, we're able to, because we reach across the state, we can make connections with other entities and other people and say, well, what are you doing here? And then share those best practices ac across the state with others. So that, that really is a, a huge piece of what we do is building those, those connections with, with educational partners, whether that's the you know, Minnesota Department of Ed or whoever it may be, um, but always finding those new opportunities, uh, you know, working on grant writing, uh, having, having grants and having finances, that's, that's, a, that's a very common uh, focus of what we're trying to do. Uh, that we have good ideas, but how do you fund those? How do you, how do you get the, the capital to make those work? So finding, finding grant opportunities. Um, and then developing new programs. Uh, we're, we're working right now on a, on a uh, program to bring CDL training into the metro area and, and enhance the education there. So uh, I, again, I mentioned earlier the, uh, the accreditation. So if you think of like, if you go to a, a shop and you see that big blue gear on the side of the side of the building, it says ASE. Well, ASE is, a, is an industry uh, standards. They, they set the standards for the industry to say, well, this is a quality shop. They're following good standards, good best, best practices in the industries. And those, those association, that association also works with us as, as a college and with education in the high schools to have accredited programs that also meet those same standards. So we're all kind of marching to that same industry standard of what's excellent. And so the, the education they're getting in the high schools transitions into what's happening in the colleges and that transitions into a quality graduate that's able to, to, to easily uh, acclimate into the, uh, into the industry. Um, we also work with uh, career fairs, expos, other events like that. Uh, and that, so that some of that falls, I, I think, into the inspiring student aspect. Um, but we also want to have industry partners and, or educational partners in that and have colleges at those fairs and at those events so that we can, that they can share what's going on and the positive things that are happening at those, at the schools. Another area that we have, and we try to build partnerships is in our sector meetings. We mentioned earlier there are uh, eight sectors, and we have we have meetings for the various sectors uh, at both the educational and the industry level, and always working to kind of merge those together and, and, and connect the education and the and industry together. But we focus specifically on the various sectors, so we'll have meetings that are focused only on automotive and and working on that, and then we'll have others that are that are power sports or whatever it may be. And again, we might hear something from an automotive program and say, hey, this could work over here in this power sports program and, and helping with that. Um, but sometimes he keeping the focus on, on automate on, on a single sector like automotive um, helps to build that connection and build the network among those sectors and helps them and helps them to say, oh, I remember speaking with, with such, you know, this person from that college and it builds that connection. And now they'll call them directly and say, hey, I need some help with this. So uh, just building those connections and making those networks is a huge piece of what we do. And I mentioned it earlier, you know, the program accreditation, there are, um, e each sector really has its own uh, accrediting body or, or entity. 
Uh, in some cases, they're a nonprofit organization, as in ASE or AED is the uh, Association of Equipment Di uh, Distributors. And so they deal with um, different types of it, like farm equipment and uh, uh, construction, things like that. So uh, each, each entity is, is kind of its own. And again, it could be nonprofit, it could be government. FAA would be the example of that in the aviation world. Uh, it's government organization, but they're very strict in, in the rules and regulations that are required for training pilots and, and aviation maintenance technicians. So we work with programs, to, with, with the different programs to become accredited and work with the accreditation uh, people and, and groups to uh, ensure that, that the standards are what they should be. Um, if there's things that could, that could be improved or areas that could be improved. Um, another area is professional development. So we need to have educators that are, are there, that are learning the, the newest technology, the newest uh, uh, methods of doing things. And so we, we, do, we do work throughout the year to provide professional development. That could be a, uh, there's a yearly conference that we focus on, but there's also you know, video training and conferences that happen throughout the year. And we try to get that information out to uh, the, the various uh, sectors that it applies to. Uh, or in some cases, it's, it's general teaching practice and the pedagogy that goes along with that. So different focuses, uh, but again, trying to find that professional development opportunity to make the best teachers and instructors out there so that they're providing the best education to provide that, in, that uh, inspiration to the students. And it only happens through connections with industry because a lot of times they're the ones providing the, the, the training that's needed. So. And another aspect that we do is new teacher mentoring. So one of the unique things, especially in the collegiate level of with instructors is they will come on board with a lot of subject matter experts. They, they've been in their field for a number of years and they come in, they come into the, into the teaching environment, but they don't necessarily have all the knowledge or skills of what it need, what you need to do to be a teacher and an instructor. Uh, so they have the, they have the subject matter experts, but not, not always the, the educational piece. So we have a program for new, new teachers, new instructors getting into the program, um, helping them with those aspects of, of being a good teacher, helping them with the resources that are needed uh, to help them be effective in what they do. And uh, it's available for, at the high school and the college level. We also have train the trainer workshops. And so uh, this is a, again, a kind of a, a collaboration between industry and education, but there'll be industry industry representatives and then and sometimes college experienced college instructors that will be helping with high school instructors um, and, and can go the other way. You can have an experienced high school teacher that's been teaching something for a long time that can be a mentor and, a, and, a, and help train um, uh, the, 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 an entry level co college person. So it's, it's a, again, a networking time, but it's, it's to help train that trainer in both the pedagogy, but also the the technical aspect of of the uh, of the industry and of the of the program. And we also have an online learning resource center. Uh, this is something that has uh, the, the Transportation Center of Excellence has had a a large large amount of resources available. Uh, but the system office has been working with us and collaborating to make it. Uh, building on each other's synergies. And so we have, a, it's a collective, uh, it's a collection of in, information and resources available, uh, both for pedagogy and the, and just the, the, the aspect of teaching and learning. But then each of the centers have in industry specific resources that are available. So this has been a collaboration that's been in the works for a little bit. Um, but again, it just continues to grow and to continues to be enhanced, uh, which is the focus of what, what really excellence is about. Uh, is just striving to always be better, no matter where you're at. Hey everyone, this is uh, Steve Humberg again, Director of Outreach at the Transportation Center. <clears throat> the next few slides are gonna be examples of some of the things we do to inspire students. But before we move on from this slide, I want, to, I want you to think a little bit about 
um, what a student really is, and especially in a non-traditional sense. So we absolutely certainly work to engage both industry and college partnerships in, um, in an advocacy uh, element of what we do, meaning we try to connect with those middle school, high school age students to get them to think about careers or college pathways and transportation. But those are traditional students. I would also like to mention that there's obvious opportunities throughout all of our sectors for veterans or for displaced workers, people who are, or just people who are looking to transition into a different style career. There's plenty of opportunity and uh, in our in workforce availability, especially in the state of Minnesota. So when we talk about inspiring students, uh, any students that you might engage with that are both traditional and non-traditional, we seek to, to also engage with. So one of the uh, resources we have is something called our career exploration trailer. You will see us sometimes abbreviate that as CET, which is easily confused with CTE, but in a lot of ways, one and the same, right? Uh, you can see in the picture here, this is a large trailer, 40, 45 feet long. And within the trailer, we have a variety of brief and mostly hands-on activities that are designed for students to uh, explore some of the things that they might experience in a transportation related career or it's transportation related college classroom. It could be, uh, it ranges from utilizing a torque wrench or an impact wrench to um, working in an aviate with an aviation simulator or a truck driving simulator. I would say that the most important element of the trailer is the conversational component. So students are welcomed into the trailer to put their hands on things, work through things, but we also seek to work in collaboration, much like you've heard early in the presentation with uh, college partners, high school partners, and industry partners. So uh, I, again, I would invite you like I did earlier to go to mintran.org to scan the QR reader below and search out on our webpage more about this trailer. Re take a look at the, the, uh, the videos, some of the photos, it will help, um, get your creative juices flowing about how this might be a good resource for you. Uh, and maybe we can bring it to your community and uh, just do a little bit of work with students and engage uh, in conversations with them about these pathways. You know, we talked earlier about the importance of outreach events and several uh, different slides. We talked about partnerships. The goal here is not necessarily recruitment. It's important to note that as a center, this is about promotion and advocacy, and as you've heard many, many times, partnership. So certainly, if I'm at a career fair, I come equipped with information about how to further study within the Minnesota state system. But what's just as important is to talk to students about general uh, education past high school looking into things that you might find interesting or opening their minds to ideas they didn't have before. And one of the ways we make this more effective is by bringing in the very credible and authentic resources that are our partners. So again, I would encourage you to think about not do you attend these things or do we attend these things as a transportation center, but can you and I work together to be part of these activities? If you have career fairs and outreach events that we could be present at to give you a hand to help students, um, traditional and otherwise, or other partners uh, become engaged, we would really enjoy that opportunity to work with you, to be in partnership uh, with colleges and industry at various career fairs and outreach events. Another uh, example of something that we do that's coordinated by us at a state level but is present in currently seven different places in Minnesota and multiple places in Wisconsin is something that we call our Nitro X summer camps. I would invite you to find our YouTube page, go on our webpage, mintran.org. You're recognizing a theme by now, I'm sure. Uh, you want to research some of these things on your own rather than just listen to me talk about them. Also be sure when you search to do Nitro hyphen X so that you get our camps, which are really meant to facilitate about a middle school age experience with some transportation related topics with highly trained uh, professionals in the industry, whether they are instructors 
or industry partners. So a quick overview is uh, middle school students attend roughly a three to five day camp experience where they learn about various transportation rela related components like drive trains and electric electrical components, sometimes autonomous components, uh, motors, uh, various elements that could easily cross over or are consistent with actual vehicles. Uh, they also get a chance to do some of that work hands-on. And at each camp, it varies, and they're, through, they're across the state. So if you have a um, connection to middle school age students that you think might enjoy that hands-on experience where they can learn about transportation through some industry tours and some um, use uh, enjoyment, um, repair even to some remote control vehicles, uh, I would strongly encourage uh, looking into this further. One of our uh, exciting things to do uh, pre-COVID and now during COVID and post-COVID is to um, is to make just to do presentations for your classrooms. Now, there are two goals. We have this obvious goal of helping students understand the various options they have. But the other goal is to help our teachers out. As we know in education, there are plenty of stressful things that people are managing. And if we can not only serve your students uh, through the presentations that we give, but also give you a chance to not only take a breath, get a relax for a few hours in a day and let somebody else do the work, but you also develop professionally by learning from the very same presentations. The other element that often happens with our Teach for a Day program, uh, again, whether it's in person or virtually, we do them both, uh, is that we often incorporate partners from college and college instructors, as well as local industry partners. The goal here is that we could talk all day long about what we do, but what's most credible and most authentic and most meaningful and impactful for students is for them to see the very same people who live and work in their communities or the very same people that are the next step for them in their education, talk about what it's really like. So I would encourage you, if you have any interest at all in this or you wanna know more, reach out to me. There's, uh, with all of these, uh, with all of this type of thing, Teach for a Day, there is no cost. I try to do all the legwork I can to bring all of the pieces together and your job is to quote unquote for teachers just show up for that day. Uh, it may be a little bit more than that, but we try to keep it far less intense than that. So I would encourage you to reach out again and maybe we can provide something like this for you or uh, others in your district that or your area that you know of. The last thing we're gonna talk about today, which is only, all of these are only a part of all the things we do, um, our virtual industry tours. I will preface this with, uh, if you've made it this far along in our presentation, you've noticed a lot of redundancy, and that's because of the team approach that we do all of our, uh, that we use as we do all of our jobs. It is important for us to engage in many different avenues and many different directions so that we can ultimately help the whole picture. So one of the things we do, not only in terms of guidance or um, advisory boards or program accreditation, we also engage with uh, industry to help the world know more about what they do, to demystify some of those elements and also to make it easier for folks. We used to do, uh, we would help coordinate in-person virtual industry tours on a regular basis. If you've got a group of students or even a group of influencers, adults, maybe a group of administrators who need to know more about what's going on in transportation related industries, we are happy to help coordinate those experiences. And sometimes that's right on site. We coordinate it, we help it out, um, but sometimes it's also virtual. And the, this is the point of this slide. We would encourage you to go to our YouTube page and look at some of the virtual industry tours that we have available. And I would encourage you to go to mintran.org and also under educator resources, find some of these supporting um, student worksheet uh, kind of mini, mini teach for a day type curriculums that you could attach to that. So if that could be helpful at all uh, for you, we would encourage you to engage in our virtual industry tours. Once again, before I move to the next slide, uh, if there's anything I can do to help you with outreach, I would encourage you to engage uh, with me over in through our webpage, email, uh, various elements like that. Thank you. 
Well, thanks everybody for allowing us uh, and to have this presentation and for uh, sitting through this. We hope that all of the information that was preceded to this was helpful to you, informative to you. You know, as I sit here at the desk, um, I, I think to myself, you know, that, that it's right on par with what we ended with, what Steve had said, where this is not just a collaborative effort to enhance education, engage industry and inspire students. It's not just collaborative. It is also a team effort, not just with the team that we have here at the Transportation Center, but as a state, as educators, as employers, as an industry. Uh, it does take all of us working together intentionally in collaboration, intentionally as a team to really make a difference, not just in our transportation and workforce and our industries, but also for our for our future students, our prospective students, and our future work for, workforce. It takes a village to raise a child, and it will take a team and a collaboration to ensure that our transportation workforce in Minnesota and beyond is what it needs to be in the future. Um, as we as we sit here and think about again those three important areas: engaging industry, enhancing education, and inspiring students. We want to encourage you to contact us at any point in time for our services, contact us about new and innovative ones that we haven't even talked about nor have we thought of maybe, contact us with partnership opportunities or areas where you want to gain partnerships, areas you want to get exposed. Whether you are a, an employer who is small and only has two or three employees or whether you're an employer who has several thousand employees and is across the state and multiple states and across the nation. If you're an OE manufacturer and you just want to be able to provide some services, we can do that. We will partner with you. Whether you're a small, tiny little school in, in a very rural area with a handful of students and a small engines class, whether you're a large school or tech college or university in the metro area that has a lot of students and a lot of employer partners get a hold of us we would really love to partner with you and most importantly to those prospective students out there whether it's you directly listening and watching this or those of you that are not a student we all have a job to do and we all have a future in the transportation workforce for the majority of us watching this we are influencers, whether we're in a position that says so on the end of our title or business card or not, we are influencers. And together we can solve some of the enormous issues in our transportation workforce. So again, on behalf of the entire Minnesota State Transportation Center of Excellence, I want to thank you so much. A reminder that if you hold your phone up one last time and put it in the corner of that QR code, you can get to our website at www.min, M-I-N-N, Tran, T R A N dot org, Mintran dot org. And I thank you again, and I hope to see you in the future.